you put up a video recently of you when you were recovering, you know, in the hospital, right? <laughs> And you yes. thought, and you thought you would never play the guitar. You know, did you take anything away from that, oh, yeah. that experience? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, it, 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 it's like you know when you have a talent for something. Mm. You know, uh, what what a shame. You know, you don't realize you take it for granted, and yeah. then you know when, especially what's the only thing you know how to do, and all, all of a sudden you know something happens and you can't do it anymore. You know, it's kind of frightening. You know, so I mean. Uh, I wish I would have taken better care of my health. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, those yeah. those things are pretty freaky. You, you know what I mean? You, you kind of take it for granted that, yeah, I can play the guitar, you know, and you think it's never going to end. Well, everything ends. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it was a, a real, um, took a lot, a lot of hours for everything to come back the way I wanted it. Right. What you was know? it that made you feel like you weren't going to be able to play the guitar? Was it? The, was it a doctor that or neurologist telling you like, oh, you, you might not ever be able to play again? Or was it just what you felt in the recovery? Uh, both. Point? Both. Oh, oh both. wow. I mean, yeah. You know, it, the, the doctors con kind of confused me, you know. Well, you know, you should have a guitar around, you know. Um, maybe you'll feel like playing again. No, no, you shouldn't have it around, you know, it'll make you frustrated. So, oh. I don't know, the music kind of won out in the end. You know, but it was it was a real it was a real drag because you know in the beginning I always felt like I was oh geez I'm got to be in competition with myself with my previous recordings you know and oh, um, wow. I had to reach the point where I, I could you know still play those burning tempos that you know I so there's one of them on every CD I ever made and so when I when I realized that I can still do that. You know, I, I felt like I was ready to go out in public and play. The only thing was that uh, I don't want to play like that no more. You know, right. it's more portal now. It's it's more contrary motion. It just seems I, I seem to you know, uh, like that better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the other stuff, you know, when, when sometimes when you play it at those tempos, it's really hard to get a musical thought out, you know? I heard something the other day, believe it or not. Uh, a link somebody sent me. Um, Tal Farlow, like, playing Cherokee in an ungodly tempo. And it's like, and I hear him, like, scuffling. Mm. You know? And, and, you know, Tal Farlow had chops. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The tempos, you know? And it was, you know, I don't know. You know, I mean, it was really, really fast. I mean... You know, and it's just, um, he had a hard, hard time with the tempo. And then, I don't know, after about 16 bars, he, he stopped trying to make every beat and every chord, you know, and all of a sudden it sounded like Tao Follow again, you know. So and I just wondered why he, he did it. I think it was just, I think it was just him. And a, the only thing I could hear, yeah, it was a bass player. Mm -hmm. I don't know who, who it was. And the guy was on brushes, drummer. It was so fast, you know. So I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think that's the. Well, I, 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 do, I, do you think can play. a lot of people can play fast? Yeah. How many people can make music with it? Not many. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the difference is is it's sort of uh, like you get a bag of tricks, right? You learn sort of a, a exactly. oh, yeah. and and you're letting the technique basically. Steer the, music, the, the musical right. ship, right? So yeah, and yeah. Uh, but I think that's part of why. You know, I mean, growing up, you know, as you know, I, I was really, really, really yeah. interested in the technical parts of it. it. Was like the wow, how do you, how did you play that? Like, how do you physically do yeah. that? And I think for an average listener who doesn't play guitar and doesn't even realize how difficult anything is, p perhaps, yeah. to them, it's like. I, they, they don't know how easy or hard it is necessarily. No. They can make assumptions about it, Clueless. but but Clueless. they're they're listening from a different standpoint, right? So yeah. I I think for them, unless they're really enthralled with listening to the pyrotechnics right. of playing, it's yeah. it's like okay, there's not as much of a connection. But then again, no. how can it be a connection if 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 your yeah. relationship as a as a musician to what you're playing is more 
technically based than musically as an expression. Becomes technical, yeah. I don't know how, yeah. how does the for, substance... For me, it was, I, I was just amazed by classical musicians, violinists, mm. and uh, especially, you know, you know, how much technique they had. And it wasn't just like one guy. It was yeah. like all of them. Yeah. You yeah. know? And their ability to read it. You know, that, that to me, that's what drove me. That and then Charlie Parker and, and, and those guys, Oscar Peterson. Yeah. You know, like the perfect marriage of technique and music. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Absolutely. Well, I, you were... I think you even posted it a while ago, but that whole experiment that Joshua Bell, the violinist, did playing in the Metro in Washington, D.C. And he's yeah, playing the no. Chacon and other, you know. Yeah, I know. And, he, and he's got his Strat out. And, uh, <coughs> yep. You know, I know. Perfect, relatively speaking, very few people paid much attention. Granted, yeah, it was at rush hour, but still, it's a little. Yeah, you know, you'd think people would stop. I would. A little bit, at least a little more than they did, you know. Um, yeah, I, I know the one criticism that that followed in, in was that, well, you know, that that's sort of a, a lame experiment because, you know, it's a busy thoroughfare. People are getting in and off of trains and, you know, and, and, and you know, it's, it's like to expect people to yeah. stop. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, but they're not. I mean, it's not if you watch the video, no one really stops. I mean, no, I know at all Jeez. for even five it seconds. Back to my original complaint is that people listen with their eyes. You know, now, if had he been on a stage somewhere in a tuxedo, you know, mm. um, then it would, that people would take notice and go, wow, he's magnificent, you know, so. And if people did, had paid $200, 300 $400 to yeah, see him. That's right. Yeah, you better like that it. that element, too, right? <laughs> you know, and, and it's, and sometimes it's about having somebody tout someone else as being the greatest thing, and then people sort of sometimes roll over. They don't want to think. Critical thinking is not something that many people do yeah. anymore. Oh, it's, it's, it's insane. You know what I also found? You know, people can't follow directions anymore. <laughs> you know, um, right. I still see it, you know, sometimes with people on, in the online school. Uh, it, it's like they'll send me emails. Well, did you mean this? No. And it, they made it harder. They add other things. Uh, no, just do this. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> That's it. You know, this is this is. You want it? You want to improve your technique? Practice slow. What do you want to practice? Play scales. You know why? So you can play the guitar, not to put it over a chord. Right. Right. You know, where am I going to use this? You know, well, geez, don't you want to play? Don't you want to be able to play the guitar? You you, you know want. It's very frustrating, yeah. right? You know, teaching somebody like that is really it's frustrating. Do you, you encounter you know, the, Yeah, you realize that you're never going to get through to this person. Do you yeah. encounter that more, having taught yeah. for as long as you have? More. How, more. how have changed? Is that one of the changes you've noticed in oh, students? Oh, absolutely, more. I notice it more and more and more. You know, um, mm. people don't want to put the time in. You know, a lot of people can't. Now, I'm not talking about the hobbyist kind of guy. Right. You know, a guy who wants to play for fun. See, I, I, I enjoy teaching somebody like that. Yeah. You know, you show them like one little thing and they really appreciate it, you know, and they, re and they realize, oh, geez, this is really easy. It's not what I thought. Right. You know, and, and it goes a long way. But sometimes, you know, people, they, they, they say a lot of things, you know, like, um, People call me for lessons. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Well, I really don't give a shit. <laughs> you, know, you can do this and I can do this and I have a great ear. And I right. have technique. And then they come in the house and they sit down. They, it's all bullshit. And they can't play. Yeah. Can't do any of it. You know. Uh, yeah, I think it's getting worse. I, I, I really, you know, I, I don't know. I, maybe, I, I think it's the internet. You know, iPhone. <clears throat> television. I news think it definitely it has a lot to do with it. Sure. Sure. You know, I don't really have the definitive answer, but I mean, that's the way it is. Those things are not going to go away. No. No. You know? Yeah. It's uh, probably it's very unlikely that's going to go away. If anything, it'll just get ramped up. 
even more so. I, I think that if you want to go into music, no matter what instrument or whatever, it's getting harder and harder and harder, you know, to, to do. Yeah. So that tells me somebody that actually can do something with it. Um, I mean, you take even like the most, sometimes I think it's the most simplest music, you know, and to actually, you know, get somewhere in the music business, that means that person tried a long, long time. Yeah. yeah. You definitely you need resilience, it. right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can take, yeah. take like actors and stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, a lot of those people, you know, they can't get work. So they became a dishwasher or anything, you know, to, to get some income. Mm. So sometimes, you know, for years, years and years, and then they finally get a part. You know what I mean? That means they really love to be, they really love acting, you know, otherwise, you know. And then, of course, there's the exceptions to everything. You know, one guy, guy pops yeah. on the scene, yeah. he makes two movies, the next thing you know, he's a star. You know, a perfect example is George Clooney, who I think has no acting ability whatsoever. He's always has face. Right. That's it. You know, so there's always going to be that. Um, I don't think that, you know, I like Humphrey Bogart. I'll take him yeah. for an example. Humphrey Bogart, uh, Catherine Hepburn, stuff like that. People are still talking about those movies now. Yeah. They're more than 50 years old. I don't think 50 years from now we're going to be talking about George Clooney or those idiots that made that TV show Friends. Jeez. No doubt. They just have faces. That's it. It's like some comedian says, what is it? What's the requirement to, uh, what's the requirement to be a cab driver in, in New York? Nothing. Just a face that they can, that's, that's it. I remember when, you, when I was asking you about how your parents reacted to you going into music, you know, the environment that I grew up in, like, I realized at a pretty early age that money itself was not like the end all be all to happiness. Kind of the opposite. I, I remember being in Vegas and, and making a lot of money uh, and also being like, wow, this really sucks. I hate what I'm doing. I, uh, I hate playing production shows. I hate playing for this guy. You know, I hate this. And, uh, you know, it was a brief time in L.A. when uh, it became very lucrative for me, but I didn't like the work, you know? Yeah. And so it's, it's hard to give up. It's If you're doing something you're making no money, it's very easy to give that up. Yeah, screw this, next. You know, but if, yeah. you're, if you're making, you know, $100,000 a year or, you know, like that, sure. that's harder to quit, you know? And then you turn to other things. For yeah. me, the drugs. Well, and alcohol, drugs. And, and well, it's a lifestyle change because then it's like, oh, I can afford right. whatever it is, whether it's drugs or, yeah. or other objects or cars. And then you realize, cars. like, now the level is, has elevated. And now I need to maintain this amount of income to maintain this. So I'm I don't sorry. want this to go away. So I don't want this to come down. Yeah. And so you sort of. You start to kind of uh, do a Faustian uh, arrangement yeah. where you you sacrifice your integrity. You explained it very well, you know. Keep this going. I might have to do this. And and see, but that's okay, though, because you have a, a yeah. reason for doing it. You have a purpose for it, you know. You just don't want to do it mindlessly because, you know. Right. Uh, what's that old expression, you know? You don't want material possessions to own you. You want to own them. Right. Like guitars and houses and cars, you know what I mean? After right. a while, those things own you. Well, but also it, it becomes an assessment of what's more of a priority for you: keeping your integrity or sacrificing it to the point where you're like, "Who the hell am I? Like, what am I doing? This is yeah. my life. Like, I, I hate what I'm doing, and I'm making a lot of money. So it's like, mm -hmm. eh, you know. Well, you know, I think people, you know, I, I think. Most people, they start to realize that in their 30s, mid-30s. Yeah. yeah. At least for me, it was like when I was 35, it was like, wait a minute. 
this ain't making it. Like Joe passed instruction. <laughs> Joe, why don't you like that? Well, what don't make it? <laughs> to me, see, that's the best thing. One of the best teachers in the world that ain't making it, you know? And I remember telling him one time, says, Joe, what does that mean? It ain't making it. He says, does that sound good to you? No, it ain't making it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, God. Well, there was that, that the album that John Pisano and Billy Bean made called Making It, right? Right. Yeah. Great album. <laughs> so, so, yeah. That's, Great album. It's, that's not yeah, it's, it's funny. You know, it's... Yeah, every, I, mean, I, I don't know. Everybody has that. I, I think well, I, even in even in other walks of life, I think. Oh, of course. I don't think you can escape it, in regardless no. of whatever occupation or vocation you go into. Right? No. Um, you know, hey, I, I know a few doctors that are miserable. Really, yeah. they you know, you know that they uh, after a while, it's not about medicine anymore. It's about something else. Right. Right. And that's sort of what happened with you with music. It's like, well, this isn't about the music that I want to be making. Yeah, that's right. And you so know. you reach that crossroads of, well, do I keep doing this or do I? Right. I mean, and that takes a, that takes a, a, a quite a backbone to do that to walk yeah. away from that. It's not that well, easy. I, I realize. I never wanted to be one of those guys to say, well, you know, if I would have stuck with it, I would have made a name in jazz. You know, uh, anybody could say that. Right, right. You know, so I didn't want to be one of those guys because, you know, I, I used to hear that a lot from hmm. um, great musicians in L.A. And, uh, some of them, not, not all. And um, uh, people in Vegas, you know. Uh, here's the opposite of that. There's a trumpet player named Rick Baptist. He liked playing shows. He liked playing studios. Mm -hmm. He liked the fact that he never made a mistake. That was his own personal challenge to himself. Mm -hmm. He enjoyed it. Yeah. He really yeah. did, you know. Um, he appreciated jazz players and, and all this other stuff. You know, he didn't have the, the highest chops in the world, you know. Um, but he could read anything flawlessly first time and what becomes hard what i found hard in vegas was to do it consistently mm. all the time and for oh, a yeah. lead trump there that takes a lot of focus you know because there's a lot of physical energy sure you know every night put two times a night in vegas you know and that's why see a guy like that when he moved to la it's perfect for him yeah that right. That's the perfect place for a guy that way. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's yeah. since retired. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, I think he's the vice president of the Los Angeles, uh, uh, LA um, Musicians Union. I, I think that's what he's doing. Still plays, still plays great, you know? Hmm. So, I don't know. Well, and, and, well, that's a great point because not everyone, you know, whatever your own calling is and whatever the set of, of, uh, passions that you have or whatever you want to pursue that that's not necessarily something to impose on anyone else but it's just waking up every morning looking yourself in the mirror and saying am yeah. i doing what i really want to be doing here and and, and i remember you asking me like well what do your folks think like what was your father's probably like yeah like, i know yeah like, i mean the oh, fact that he dropped you off of that at at on 20th and green with that <laughs> homeless guy laying on the stumps and drove away and i'm watching this through the window and i went Wow. <laughs> John, that was the guy's name. Yes. Yeah. Um, My yeah. doorman. Yeah. He had to step over him. He was yeah. he was too he was yeah. he's too That's strung right. out to get up. And I'm sort of trying to you can't like really there's not enough width there in the entryway to go around. Go over so him. it's like right. oh man, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I remember it well, you know. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. But he didn't, it, it, that's, that was his thing. Was his, It's like, hey, you know, whatever you're going to do, whatever pursuit, you should do it because you love to do it. And because yeah. even if you do something like in his case, he didn't love engineering. That's not what he wanted to do ultimately. He wanted to go yeah. into law, but his father said, no, no, no. no. You're, you're going to be an engineer like I am. Well, you know, there's, there's a movie called uh, Fear Strikes Out. 
got oh. a baseball player. Carl Molden is his father. And his father wanted to be a major league you know, baseball player. And his son, Anthony Perkins, you know, uh, actually did make it. His father pushed him and pushed him and pushed him. Oh, wow. Know, to get in the major leagues. And finally had like a major mental breakdown, you know, and it was all Carl Molden's fault. Right, realizes at the end of the movie that man, he almost killed his own son with you know staying on his back. You're going to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You know. So. so was the father who wanted it. The kid wasn't really. It was just a vicarious. Yeah, he had a talent for it. Yeah. I mean, natural talent for it. You know, I mean, I don't know. Some of these musicians today kind of wish <laughs> that they would flip out and go do something else. <laughs> they took music out of schools public yeah. school system. I mean, that's a dumb thing. You know, I mean, not that everybody's going to be a musician. Right. You know, of course not. But still, you know, they're not hanging on a corner doing dope or, you know, committing crime on the streets, mm. you know, because they have no direction. You know, um, and then they take, then they did, they took God out of the school too. Right, you know, you know, well, he gets no, re no religion, none of this. I mean, that's why a lot of young people they have no values, they have no moral compass whatsoever. Well, but a lot of it's also development that has to do with external life. Yeah. It has nothing to do with developing you as a person because it's like, hey, I put this picture up on my Facebook. Like, how many likes am I going to get? <laughs> Check out my Instagram yeah. this. Yeah. It's all a very superficial thing, and, and there's nothing within. And music sort of forces you to turn that mirror in on yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And develop yeah. in that in that sense. It's a good thing. Never hurt anybody, you know? No. I, I, so, yeah, I, I think that's a big nobody, part of it. Nobody has the answer, and nobody ever well, going to have the answer. Well, there's also the motivation in terms of going into music. I mean... You know, for me, it was always about just my own sort of an escape, like a, a refuge for me where I could go yeah. into. It had nothing to do with getting in front of people and playing and being like, look at me. Yeah. I'm, you know, if you were to look at non-musicians or even non-artists, yeah. is there one or maybe a couple that stand out in your mind who are most influential, whether it was like maybe a philosopher or you know, a novelist or whatever, you know, because that's always something I'm, I'm wondering about. Because we get our influences as musicians. I mean, um, sometimes not from and, other musicians or artists, but and and Rand, the Fountainhead. Oh yeah, that the author, that Howard Rourke. And what was that, it about Ann Rand? That, he did. He didn't. Never wanted to. He did. Wouldn't compromise his his uh, aesthetics about okay. what architecture should be. Even to this day, I still still remember that book. Fountainhead. You know, that's first. Yeah, exactly right. The first. That's the first thing that popped into my head. You know, and, and yeah, a lot of those composers like Bach. I mean, they had you know philosophy books, and a lot of yeah, their stuff in, right. in terms of music came out of that. I mean, Aristotle talks about. I mean, all of those ancient I philosophers. I mean, whatever is still left of their work. I mean, yeah, they, they talk yeah. about it. I mean, there, there's you know, parts in Aristotle where he talks about the modes. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's not the same mode that we know as Dorian, but, you right. know, and he talks about, well, this mode is a much more masculine mode, and we should like this one, but we yeah. should avoid this one because it's more, it's right. a weaker yeah. sound. Yeah. You know, when Howard Roberts died, um, uh, they auctioned off his book collection. Something like that. Somebody got it, mm -hmm. you know? And it wasn't, it wasn't, we're not talking a thousand books. It was like maybe, maybe a dozen, dozen books about, about music, about, but some were about music, some were about composing. There was other books about architecture. You know, I wish I could remember all the different topics, you know, hmm. and there wasn't a lot of them, you know, so then a lot to be said for that. Are you still doing the guitar workshop? Is that yeah. still, that still is yeah. happening? So people oh, yeah. can still sign Absolutely. up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It it it, it's, it it does well. Some some people stay for a long time. Other people will sign up, get the three months, get what they want, whatever they need, and 
you know, okay. it's, it's always been like that, you know, okay. um, there's never going to be thousands and thousands of students. It's just right. not never going to be. Um, plus, I don't think I could do that. I don't have enough time to. If, could you imagine if a thousand people sent in a video in the day? My God, what would I do? <laughs> you know, can't do it. And um, so that's doing good. I, I, I really like doing these YouTube things. And um, people are telling me that, you know, I, I haven't uh, looked into it enough, but there, you can also charge money for these little mini lessons, you know. Um, so I'm thinking about expanding the school that way because I think I could get some guys, some guys don't want to make a three month com commitment. Okay. So I, I think there's an, a, another viable way to, to make a, f a few bucks playing the guitar, you know, and, um, uh, the, the performance schedule is starting to get busy again. You know, uh, Frank Vignola just emailed me this morning. Here's a bunch of dates for the Iridium in New York. And, you know, so that's picking up um, interviews. This, you know, a yeah, yeah. couple other ones. Um, um, the amp company, Hendrix and Amps, the bud, that guy. Some, some, some event is coming up. Okay. And, and they want to interview people who use those amps. You know, so it, it's getting, you know, everything's coming back, but it's coming back in a better way. Right. What if you had, if you were to direct someone, because there's so many different things, right? You've got Facebook, you've got YouTube, you've got, what, what would be the best way for people to follow you and, and get, you know, the latest on what's going on as far as JimmyBruno.com. JimmyBruno.com. Jimmy okay. Or e just email me. Or emailing you. Jimmy at JimmyBruno. You do daily, pretty much daily YouTube uh, yeah, every, entries, every right? day. So that probably would be a, a decent way to keep abreast of what's going Absolutely. on yeah yeah you know. because every every day i can tell you what i did the day before or what i'm going to do today um you know um today i did something about the, the blues uh you know uh the jazz blues like that you know? okay and just demonstrating how that it's, it's not so easy it's not a one scale fits all right kind of thing you know uh and that, I'm looking forward to this new uh, instruction. I'm going to do a, a couple things for True Fire. Okay. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that because that's it, it's the perfect medium for that. And uh, it, it's uh, that'll reach a lot more people than my school will. Okay. I I think so. Yeah. And is True so, Fire centered around? music education or just specifically yeah. guitar? I don't know much about it. So, um, There's a lot of guitar. There's a, there's a lot of every instrument there. Okay. At all levels from beginning to dance stuff, you know. Oh, wow. uh, Pat has a, Pat Martino has a couple of them on there, you know. Okay. Very philosophical approach to music and then there's other guys, you know, here have say play a G seventh chord, and, you know, so, uh, those people that are running that, they, they did the right thing. They hit on the the, uh, the magic formula, I think. And uh, I also think that Hendrickson's amp did too. Yeah, yeah. Guy Peter, Peter Hendrickson. That's yeah. Bud's son. You know, I, when I first, you know, tried that, I told him, geez, is it the magic bullet? You know, I noticed it when I went to that artisan guitar show. Every booth had one of those amps. And everyone I plugged into with all kind of different guitars. Mm -hmm. it, it sounded great. The amp sounded great for, oh, I don't know how many different makers were there. But, yeah. You know, 50, 60, it always sounded good. And then I, I go to New York. Um, um, the first time I went back to New York after I got sick. And what do I see in every club? Hamilton amps. Okay. You know, so I think he hit the hit a home run there. Yeah, and then, funny. you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what guitar, I mean, what, what strings you put on your guitar. That really doesn't have anything to do with the music. Well, it does if you're yeah. in a gear, if you're in a gear loop, string loop. Well, yeah, well, in a pick loop. He worked at Zap's Music. Oh, yeah. And the guy's looking at a pick. It's this guy says, I'm going to try this pick. And he holds up a pick. And... <laughs> <coughs> 
<laughs> Tim Matos is the guy. Now, wait a minute. No, not this week. Try the blue picks. They sound better. And the guy actually picked up the blue pick and went, well, you're right. Yeah, give me a dozen of the blue picks. You know, so that to me is the epitome of, I'll never forget that story. It's so <laughs> that's, the, that's the ultimate loop. <laughs> you get into the, the color. Ultimate. Well, then, then he has to go one step further and go, well, the Azure blue pick, as opposed to the Navy blue pick, you need that oh, one. Oh, absolutely. They That'll bring your playing blue. up even a couple more notches if yeah, you use that color. Yeah, shades of blue. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, it comes, it com I, you know, I think <laughs> guitar players are really the, the biggest loop gearheads in, that, that I've ever met. I don't know. I, I never hear saxophone players go, hey, Not man, like check that. this read out i don't know it's not like that know, i mean you know, piano players i mean they got to go play whatever the whatever club has got, right <laughs> yeah. you know so I, I don't know i think guitar player is the biggest biggest gas gear act acquisition syndrome you know yeah right? well there's so much there's there's so many more toys oh yeah how many toys right. do you have for a saxophone player <laughs> like mark yeah. kramer said to me i've discovered the, you know i got MIDI keyboard and stuff, and I'm asking him all about MIDI and stuff. This is years ago. He said, oh, Jimmy, you fell down the MIDI hole. I said, what does that mean, Mark? He says, you'll see. You know, <laughs> like, you know, five days later, it's like, you know, no sleeping two hours a, a night, and I'm trying this, and I'm trying that. He went, see, you're in the MIDI hole. You fell down the MIDI hole. <laughs> He's so right. He's so right. So the project with Frank has been doing yeah. great. You have yeah. stuff coming up that you guys are going to be doing at, at the, the end of this year yeah. or next so, year? Uh, October, there's a, there's a gig at the Zinc with the Trio. Okay. And that's uh, October, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, October 29th, Monday night at the Zinc Bar. Okay. That's Monday the, night at the Zinc the Bar, New York. Yeah. And, and then you've... There's yeah. no, nothing significant until after the first of the year. And you mentioned you're also doing a project with a, a new instructional video or series that's coming out, right? True Fire. True oh, through Fire, True yeah. Fire. Okay, so that'll be available online. That's not going to be... The, the days of DVD yeah. and all that stuff are pretty much done, right? Yeah, yeah. It's all streamed now. Well, like the no-nonsense guitar that you, that you guys recorded. It's still around. It's still it's around. Still around. Is that, that's also downloadable now, right? Or do you uh, that I don't know. I lost all track of, of, of that company. I lost track of Arlen Roth and that okay. whole thing. And got sold the music sales. I, I don't know, but I know it's still around because I, people tell me, well, I, I, I bought it. Okay. You know, and, and, and uh, you know, now I teach differently. Yeah. Do you, feel, do you feel like that would be a good avenue for someone to pursue, or is it better for them just to wait? You know, I will wait. To be honest, wait I would, the I would stuff, wait because yeah. the more you do it, you find better ways to explain things. Yeah, yeah. You know, that, 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 you know, essentially, it's the same. Right. You know, the core of the of my teaching is still the same. It's just I explain it a, a lot easier. Okay. And then you, you know, also so, had published like the Five Fingerings book. Is is stuff like that still available, or do you have that as a downloadable? Yeah. Now, now I don't know if it's. Uh, I think it is. It's Mel Bay. That's Mel Bay. Okay. Six essential fingerings. Yeah. So Mel Bay yeah, so publishes that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I mean that that that's still valid. Awesome. Well, I really really appreciate all the time that you've uh, invested. Right, in this. Keep in touch. All right. I yeah I will definitely do that, and uh, you know please keep me uh, posted as to any all other right. stuff that's coming up. You know. Okay. All Absolutely. right, Jimmy. Thanks, Thanks again, man. All right. All right. I'll talk to you too.